Okay. So I was just trying to check uh, do we need any other tables or anything else. So these are this is the method to con connect to data sources and extract it, store it. So this is all about the extractor. So the extractor's job is done now. Now the second level of transformations, you can create a second QEW file telling okay this is the transformation level where you load data from QVDs, transform these QVDs and you can store it into an end QVD. So I can do this but uh, there is no major transformation that I will have to do. Only thing is you, you need to have a specific kind of a transformation logic. So if you have any, like if you have 10 files, 10 table files, like in data warehousing you might want to convert the transform it into one database table. So you can do that. So out of 10 QVDs, you can create one QVD. So all you have to do is create one click view file. So if you have that serious transformation, you can add another folder over here saying transformation file. Right Under this transformation file, you can store the trans uh, QVW and create the transformation. So our extractor job is done. Our extractor is always blank. It will just extract data and store it. We'll start with a new file. So this file is mainly a transformation file. So we'll see what all you can do over here. Now, I can load data from QVDs. So now I have stored this one-to-one -one QVDs, right? So everything is stored in QVD. Now I'll have to load the data from this QVD file. Rather than going back to the source, I'll have to use this. So all I have to do is point to that path and pick up. Now QVDs are nothing but flat files. So like I said, if you want to load data from flat files, you'll have to use the table files option. So use the table file option. Go to that particular folder and you can pick up any any QED that you would want to. So special offer ID, maybe you can pick up the sales order header. So you can look at it. Over here it is selected as QED option. Next, you can write a where clause. You can do anything or just plain in next. Click you will create a native statement. Now whatever these statements all are click you native statements. So load is basically within click you. It is executing the statement within click you. Like this, you can load data, do a lot of joins, left joins and right joins, and I mean anything and everything you do in ClickView in SQL querying, right? The same thing that you can do it over here and do it. So we'll see that slowly. But uh, I would not do it in the transformation file because there is nothing much to transform here. So I'll directly jump into the data model file. So where we learn all our uh, tips and tricks of scripting and doing this transformation. We'll be doing a couple of transformations in the data model level also. So don't worry about that. So the same thing you'll have to apply one step before that transformation. So again, it's uh, it's not mandatory to have this transformation uh, step in all the projects, right? It's just based on the requirement. So if your project is very complex, you can't directly use data from the one-to-one -one QVDs. You do the transformation, store it into like transformed QVDs, and then use the data. Otherwise, just continue using it directly from the plain universe, the QVDs. So I'll start a new data model file. So in the data model folder, I'll set up this file. So I'll save file as data model. Now this data model is where I will load all the QED data. I'll structure the data model and I'll work on how do we figure, I mean, structure the whole linking. Coming back to data modeling in ClickView, it is not something totally different or it's not new. 
if you have to look at it. So it's the traditional method of having a fact in the center, right? And bringing dimensions uh, across it. So there's absolutely no, I mean, these dimensions can be anything. And we just have to make sure all the measures are in the fact. So click view works on an associative property. So you associate these dimensions to the fact and then when you make selections for these dimensions, that's where your facts get filtered and you get the aggregation on the fact. So there are two traditional or basic modeling techniques. One is star schema and another is snowflake schema. You can continue, you can use either or one of them. The preferred is the star schema, but not always you will be able to get a star schema because of the way the data is created or if you're using just transactional tables directly, the way you'll end up using a snowflake schema. Snowflake schema is you'll have a fact you'll have a dimension, you'll have a, a extended dimension for this dimension, right? So this is basically, you'll understand while we are doing this. So there'll be a link from fact to the dimension. Again, from the dimension to another dimension, it will be that. So this chain can continue to n number of dimensions. There is no limitation as to how much, how many levels you can have. So this becomes a snowflake schema. But typically, this task schema relies only till here. So one fact at the center, and all the dimensions around the fact. So that's the only two methods are there in ClickView, and you'll have to follow. Now, whatever transformations or loading you do will be in this. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, here fact is entity, and the di uh, dimensions you are telling are the attributes, right? Right, exactly. So if you want to term it that way, yeah, that's fact is the entity, and the attributes are around it. Okay. 